Hey people, welcome to The Run Testers, and in this video I'm dishing up my first run thoughts on a running shoe collaboration between super stylish Paris base, premium performance running apparel maker Satisfy and Hoka. Now we're used to seeing running shoes kind of modded over into being used as sneakers, but this Hoka Clifton LS Satisfy takes the Clifton LS lifestyle shoe, which riffs off the Clifton 8 design, and creates what Hoka calls an all-terrain trail ready running shoe. Now this is a collab that's definitely aiming to bring style to your miles. It's also right up there when it comes to price. So are you paying for the sharp looks alone or is there some substance too? I took it out for a spin to find out. So watch on for my Hoka Clifton LS Time Satisfy first run initial impressions. Now some quick details then, well the Clifton LS Satisfy doesn't have a listed stack height, but if it's based on the Clifton 8, that's around 27 mils in the heel and 22 mils in the forefoot for a five mil drop. They weigh in at 261 grams on 9.3 ounces in my UK men's size nine test shoe. On price, the Hoka Clifton LS Satisfy come in at 185 pounds in the UK or $225 in the US. Clifton LS Satisfy is a neutral shoe with balanced cushioning that Hoka says aims to provide a protective ride with a responsive toe off. It's designed around the Clifton 8 tooling but has some updates to make it more stylish for that crossover run and everyday wear vibe. Now the Satisfy edition reduces the weight and it replaces some natural materials such as suede and leather with reflectivity and technical overlays. There's lots of stuff here that's been changed, some that I'm not entirely familiar with including asymmetrical engineered base mesh translucent hot melt print, double heel webbing pull, woven tongue webbing, and a custom crag box. I have no idea what a crag box is, but sounds good. But what I do know is you've got a big stack of compression molded EVA foam and a Clifton style rocker here. Up top, you've got a custom Creole Jacquard mesh with the design that's inspired by topographic maps. You've got medium padded heel collars, a thin wrapping tongue. There's a smart lacing system, and you also get reflective molded toe caps and these double heel pulls here. Flip them over and you've got a good covering of durabrasion rubber on the outsole to provide the durability and grip. So first up a quick word on fit and I actually ran in a UK 9 in these shoes and they are very tight. Like really tight across the top of the foot, it's really hard to get your foot into them. I, it was a real wrestle to get, even get them on my feet and thank god you have those two sort of heel loops to help and the loop on top of the tongue so I literally had to pull with all my might with both of them to get them in. I always struggle with this kind of quick lacing structure, Salomon shoes, exactly the same because I've got quite a high instep but absolutely I normally run an eight and a half, in a nine these are still too tight all the way across the top, the toe box is really really snug, it almost kind of feels like it's deadening the foot a bit for me so if you're going to invest in these shoes and you're going to use them for running I, I would say you might even want to go a whole size up particularly if you have high instep or big wide feet like I do. So yeah, sizing was a bit of an issue here and yeah, it wasn't particularly enjoyable. I guess the one thing I will say is that I didn't have any heel slipping or any movement of the shoe in any way, shape or form because my foot literally cannot move. My toes are very cramped and it can't breathe. So yeah, that tight fit fixes that problem, but it is very cramped. So for the run test, I've just done 10 Ks a lot of it on roads, some of it on river paths that were quite wet and sloppy out there, basically a 50-50. Back in the car immediately after that, first thing to say, a little bit uncomfortable because of the tight fit, didn't make these shoes initially particularly nice to run in. They have loosened off a bit. I've now had them on, I had them on a bit earlier as well as wearing them around the house. They have loosened off a little bit, but there was a lot of kind of foot numbing that went on. It was a bit deadening initially. That coupled with the fact that I think what we've got here is a compression molded EVA foam that you'll find on other hokers and it felt very firm initially. It did soften up towards the end of the run, but that in combination with the tightness just made for a, a slightly uncomfortable kind of ride underfoot overall, or, you know, feel on the shoe. These are not a shoe that disappear on the foot necessarily immediately. And that was very, very clear. Once I got moving, once that foam felt like it had softened up and once I was clipping along, you know, you can feel the rocker working here. You've got a pretty much a similar sort of ride to probably a Clifton 9 that's going on. There is you know, some softness, I think mainly coming from the footbed rather than the foam itself. What we're talking about here is a shoe that runs pretty firm. You're relying on the responsiveness and the rocker to get you through. You're having to pick up your feet nice and quick in it to get the most out of it. It doesn't feel particularly forgiving. That said, once you get clipping and rolling, 
like I say, it's about many other shoes and you're picking your feet fast. It does move along in quite a light, easy fashion overall. You know, there's not much coming back by way of energy. I didn't find from the midsole, you're having to do a lot of the work. If you don't mind that, then that's absolutely fine. You're gonna get that from this shoe. They coped with the wet and the mud in terms of grip and everything. You know, there is a bit of a, a more pronounced uh, outsole rubber on this. And even though I was in some sort of wet conditions over on the other side of the river where it was quite muddy and sloppy, they, they coped quite well. You know, I'm not talking about you know, really slicky mud, but just the top surface was wet. Um, so they did that really nicely as well. And for the hour or so that I've been in the shoes, they certainly became a little bit more comfortable as the time went on. Are they my favourite shoes to run in? I don't think so. Do I think that, you know, overall what you're paying for here is that collaboration with Satisfy. You know, it's a brand that they make very nice premium clothing that is often very expensive. So you're, you're basically paying for that extra kind of style points. Uh, would you want to run in them? I, I don't know, really. It's one of those things like these are beautiful looking, but, you know, they're white. I've already messed them up in the mud. And yeah, if I'm paying for that that design and that pattern and that styling, then maybe not. If you don't mind getting a mucky and you're not thinking about that, then go for it. Are they 20 pounds better than some of the other daily trainers that are going out there? I, I'm not sure they are. I've been running in some really good shoes recently. Overall, I don't know. I think the ride, you know, I, 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 it was fine. Did the job that I needed it to do. I was running at sort of paces between, you know, anywhere between eight minute miles up to sort of nine and a halves, maybe a little bit quicker for shorter spells as well. And as I said, when you're moving well and turning over fast, you know, it's not, you don't need as much protection perhaps from the ground. You're doing all the hard work, your feet, there's sort of light contact. You know, when you've got that fast clip over and that quick contact, then they they move nicely and they, they roll nicely. They were absolutely fine for that. I I think as a sort of shoe that I would use for up to sort of 10Ks, they, they seem good. I'm not sure I'd go that much longer in them, but then again, I'm, you know, maybe I'm just feeling the fit. So my verdict on these Hoka Clifton LS times Satisfy shoes, well, it's quite a hard one because even though I'm wearing a half a size up in terms of the sizing, these shoes are very tight on the foot. And I think that has affected the way I feel about the ride of them overall. They're just not entirely comfortable. And for that reason, it's very hard to sort of recommend them. <laughs> um, the ride though underfoot, okay. Not my favorite sort of daily shoe. I, they're very firm. I do like a firmer shoe which is kind of fine. If you like that sort of thing, that's gonna, you know, they're definitely gonna offer that in spades. You know, apart from the sizing, I didn't really dislike the ride underfoot. There's good roll through from the rocker. They clip along nicely, there's a decent bit of response, but I just don't think that I would pay the extra 20 pounds for them. I think there are much better shoes that offer more versatility. I I'm not sold by the styling on them either. That's not really something I look for in a pair of shoes. I know that I've got these muddy already if you are somebody though who really cares about having those kind of style details and you're looking for a shoe that you might be able to wear, you know, as a fashion statement or a style statement and then cross over into a bit of running where it's going to be largely clean, then yeah, these shoes probably offer something because, you know, there is some difference in the detailing of the uppers and the styling and all of that kind of stuff. But that's just not my thing. I want a shoe that's going to run well. And although they do run okay, they're not the best run that I've had this year by any stretch in a daily trainer. And I probably just wouldn't recommend paying that extra 20 pounds unless you really, really, really want that extra kind of satisfy styling and detailing. So there you have it. That has been my first run in the Hoka Clifton LS Time Satisfy shoe. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions on this, please hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you subscribe, it really helps us keep creating this content. I say it over and over again, but it means a lot to us because yeah, it just means that we can carry on putting out the reviews, doing the testing, and hopefully bringing you useful videos. We always appreciate you guys checking in and spending time with us, so thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, big thumbs up. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers, and happy running. Good luck with all the things that you're trying to achieve out there.